So I'm going to talk about, so I'm going to give a really micro overview of iPlant. I'm going to assume that you have at least some familiarity with the project um, because what we really want to talk about is um, how we, you know, is these, uh, are the successes of this year and where we're going in the coming year and the following year. It's always nice to come to PAG and show that we've effectively done what we said we were going to do last year at PAG or the year before. Um, and I think we have a lot to, uh, a lot to talk about today. So I'm Director of Life Sciences Computing at, at TAC. Um, other iPlant co-PIs are in the room here, Nirav Merchant, Eric Lyons, um, Steve Goff, um, Doreen, Doreen may be here somewhere. So feel free to seek us out um, during or after the session if you'd like to talk or get some more information. So at the 50,000 foot view, what's iPlant? Um, iPlant is a, uh, uh, a 10 year uh, NSF sponsored uh, collaborative project to not just build, um, so it's fun to build stuff, but um, not just to build, but to operate and support with, you know, with real humans at the other end of the line, um, an extensible and powerful cyber infrastructure for the life sciences. So what do I mean by extensible? Um, it means that iPlant is never just a static thing. Um, it can always be, um, it's always gaining new functionalities, and it's not just the iPlant staff that are doing that. Um, in fact, we've been designed from the ground up so that members of the community, bioinformaticians, software developers, computer scientists, can add new functionalities to iPlant, and I think it's been a key to our success. And powerful, because through iPlant, you have access to some of the most powerful supercomputers in the world, so that you're no longer bound by um, computation or data storage requirements. So this is a block diagram of iPlant. Um, this just is kind of an orienting roadmap um, so that as you hear various products and services and concepts um, through the next series of talks, you'll know kind of where these fit on the roadmap. So um, this is iPlant, this is a cyber infrastructure, this leaves out the people. Down here is all of the hardware resources. This is all the, comp uh, the computing and storage and disk and cloud system stuff. This is the hard stuff. And the intermediate layers are middleware. So this is, these are generally open source projects that we've, um, that we've connected together and integrated and made um, and abstracted away so that, they're, um, so that they're imminently usable by people who have better things to do than deal with OpenStack and Condor and iRods, et cetera. Sitting on top of these are a set of what we call foundational services. This is things like the iPlant data store or the science application pro programming interfaces, authentication, search, et cetera. Um, we use this stack of things to build community-facing resources. These are things that many of you think of when you think of iPlant, the discovery environment, atmosphere, the DNA subway, et cetera. And they're also the basis for third parties who build things based on, on iPlant. So iPlant is an enabling infrastructure that other people can use, um, kind of like a set of Legos. So iPlant, as I mentioned, provides um, some very high quality software products. They're, all, uh, they're designed for different classes of users. Um, the DNA subway is for beginning users. The discovery environment is a graphical workbench um, for folks who are relatively naive to the command line but who have computational needs. Atmosphere is user provisioned cloud. BISC is an image analysis platform. The upcoming in the next couple of years, spatial data infrastructure will be a workbench oriented around um, spatial data. The science APIs are for scripters or tool builders, et cetera, and the iPlant data store underlies all of this. It's scalable, capable, replicated storage. And iPlant services. So this is the other component of iPlant that I think makes it successful. In addition to all of the really cool geeky stuff, we do a lot of education, outreach, and training. Um, you've, you've been to an iPlant workshop. You've seen Jason and his cohorts. Um, we, t we teach and engage with hundreds or thousands of folks a year. We do real-time user support, usually with a turnaround of 24 hours. We have, we uh, sponsor hackathons and workshops, collaborative uh, programs, and of course, the Powered by iPlant program. 
So some highlights. First of all, um, iPlant's had a great year, and this is just a few of the things that have gone really well for us. First of all, we've talked about the Thousand Plant Transcriptomes Project probably every PAG since we started coming to PAG. This is a project, um, a collaborative project to sequence a thousand plant transcriptomes. This year we can announce that the marker paper came out. Um, it provided, as expected, some key insights into evolutionary relationships. But the cool thing is that all of the sequence data, all the assemblies, all the downstream analyses, plus workflows for replicating these analyses yourself and visualization tools were all made available through iPlant. You can find out about that at this second, uh, at this second URL um, published at GigaScience. Another highlight, um, so iPlant's a fantastic data dissemination platform. It's also a fantastic toolbox for rapidly developing new community resources. iMicrobe is a project by the Hurwitz Lab at University of Arizona, funded by Gordon Bet and Betty Moore Foundation. Their objective was to take the camera microbial data, uh, data set and set of workflows and take it through its obsolescence. Um, it lost its funding. Um, it needed to move to a, uh, a sustainable uh, environment. So they, um, uh, they did that using iPlant technologies. And because they relied on iPlant, they were able to go from effectively a retiring database to something that looks like this in just two months of development time. Um, and in fact, they were so happy with this, this is being replicated to power a viral genomics platform. So iPlant is great for folks who want to build um, uh, infrastructure. So other highlights, this is a broader thing. Um, iPlant's broadening impact. We originally started as a plant genomics initiative. Um, last year we announced that we were supporting um, uh, animal science and viral genomics and fungal genomics, et cetera. Um, so in the Power by iPlant program, we continue to power Galaxy Maine. Um, Koji is tightly integrated with us. We work with KBase. Um, new to the consortium is the Soy KB, who's rapidly adopting a lot of iPlant technologies to boost the capabilities for their end users. Um, but beyond this, there are other um, adoptions. So iPlant's beginning to see adoption outside the life sciences. So there are collaborative projects with NASA the USDA ARS um, and within the state of Arizona, um, an environmental uh, layers group. And in fact, there's some adoption by NIH projects as well. And this is pretty cool and kind of validating for us. And finally, um, iPlant technologies are going to be the basis of a new supercomputing system um, that's, uh, that'll be available for all domains of science. So who here has used iPlant Atmosphere? All right, so atmosphere is fantastic, user provisionable cloud. Um, you know, we know that atmosphere is fantastic. It demonstrated the value of user provisioned cloud and ease of use. So we partnered with our close friends, Indiana University, UT San Antonio, Johns Hopkins, and Penn State to bring atmosphere to basically the whole US. Um, this is a recently funded by NSF Advanced Cyber Infrastructure. Um, and it'll be available in January 2016 via the Exceed program. This is about 50x the capacity of Atmosphere, same great user interface uh, that you're used to seeing, but there'll be some innovative new capabilities. So if you're interested in Atmosphere, follow Jetstream, or in, in Jet, uh, Jetstream, follow Jetstream Cloud on Twitter, and you'll uh, be the first to know. So what's coming next for iPlant? Um, new high-performance tools and workflows like um, a high performance version of Maker P. So you'll hear a little bit about that in one of the talks. The iPlant Data Commons that Jeremy will talk about. It'll enhance your discoverability, persistence, and provenance of your data. Um, expanded support for pro users and developers. We're going to do a lot more API workshops and tutorials and engagement so that, um, that tool builders can take advantage of us. And finally, we'll roll out over the coming year some new capabilities to support what we're calling science communities so that we can bring in wholly formed groups of folks who have community plans on how to support science and engage with them in somewhat of a federation model.